Do you wish you could improve your cooking skills, but you don't have the time, the energy, or the money to go to culinary school? Or maybe you just wish you could get healthy meals on the table faster. You know, ones that actually taste good? I've got you, Mama. I'm Chris Davniak. I'm a trained chef, a culinary nutritionist, and a mom of two, and I teach home cooks how to up-level everyday meals without the extra stress. And I want you to join me for Cooking School, my free five-day workshop where you'll spend five days learning the basics and beyond of becoming a great cook. No culinary school tuition needed. In fact, it's 100% free. Cooking School is for you if you wish you had better cooking skills, if you just want to get those healthy-ish meals on the table faster. It's also for you if you never really learned to cook and you could use a rundown of how to not be afraid of that knife, chop faster, and what all those weird culinary terms actually mean. It's also for you if you do have the basics down, but you want to up-level things a bit, explore new flavors, or maybe learn to cook from scratch without extra stress. If any of those sound like you, cooking school is for you. Classes and sessions soon, so grab your apron, click the link in the description, and join us for cooking school. Welcome to Healthy Mama Hacks, a weekly mini podcast where I share my best tips for hacking your healthy mama life with simple tips for easier eating, cooking, and living a healthy mama life in 20-ish minutes, about the time it takes you to fold a load of laundry. So let's do this, mama. Hey friend, welcome back to another episode of Healthy Mama Hacks. I'm Chris, your host, and this is the third part in my Cooking Basics series. For those of you who don't know, I'm a trained chef, a former personal chef, as well as a holistic health coach, which doesn't really apply in these episodes, and uh, also a busy mama of two. And the purpose of this series is to help you to become a better cook or learn to cook. So in the first episode in this series, if you haven't listened to the other two episodes, I highly encourage you to listen to those episodes first. We talked about where to begin, why it's important to learn how to cook or to become a better cook. It's less expensive. It's innately healthier. It's super rewarding. And we talked about the how, how to start somewhere. It doesn't have to be all or nothing how to start to gain more confidence in the kitchen, learn cooking terms, and the homework, if you haven't yet done it, is to research, to eat food, to play with food, to get in the kitchen. And then last week, we talked about the elements of flavor. We talked about taste, texture, and temperature, and I took you through each one of them and how they can help to enhance your food and help to make you a better cook overall. These are essentially the secrets of making your food taste delicious. So again, if you haven't listened to those episodes, I will link them in the show notes. I highly encourage you to listen to those episodes, but you can really listen to these in any order. Today, I am going to dig into cooking methods 101. This is one of the things I hear a lot from new cooking class students, whether I'm teaching in person or online. I hear a lot of people who feel like they know how to cook, but they, or they know how to follow a recipe, they like to cook, but they never really get the effect that they want, or they oftentimes don't get the effect that they want when they're trying to cook something. So something doesn't turn out crispy like the recipe says it's going to, or they're trying to roast vegetables and their vegetables end up a little bit mushy. So learning about cooking methods and learning about moist heat cooking methods and dry heat cooking methods and then combination cooking heat methods can help you to actually get the outcome you want, especially when it comes to the texture of your dishes. And as we talked about last week, taste, texture, and temperature are what are going to give your dishes flavor. And what we're looking for is variety, balance, and contrast in those. So knowing the cooking methods will help you to actually have a dish that feels the way you want it to feel. So it'll help to determine the effect exactly what you want to get out of the food that you're cooking whether you want it to be crispy or you want it to be crunchy or you want it to be creamy and this will affect the mouthfeel and the overall texture of your dish and that is going to help with the overall flavor so what we're going to talk about what we're going to start with is we're going to talk about the different types of cooking methods so there are three types of cooking methods i already mentioned them but they are moist heat, dry heat, or combination. And these can seem pretty obvious when I just use those terms, but they aren't as obvious as they might seem. Some of them are. So moist heat cooking methods is any cooking method that is using 
any sort of liquid. Okay, so it, it can be water, but it doesn't have to be water. It can be a broth or another sort of liquid. So these are things like poaching. So whether you're poaching an egg or poaching fish, you are typically poaching with either, you know, okay, when we're talking about poaching fish, you might also poach in a fat, in a butter, but it's in a liquid form. It's melted. So typically you poach in water, but you could also poach in broth or you could poach in fat. So that's a moist heat cooking method. Steaming is also a moist heat cooking method. You are using steam. So you're using the liquid in the bottom in a steamer basket or a steamer, and you are using the steam to cook the vegetables typically, or sometimes, you know, it's something else in another dish. There, there are, we'll talk about combination cooking methods in just a minute. But steaming, you are also using typically water. And then, of course, there is boiling, and you're going to be using water for that. So thinking about boiling pasta. And then any sort of soups are uh, obviously a moist heat cooking method because you're boiling or you are simmering. So those are your moist heat cooking methods, and this is pretty obvious. Anything that you cook with a moist heat cooking method is typically going to have a soft texture. So if you are poaching fish, you are not going to get crispy skin or a crispy sear on top. Same thing with your chicken, same thing with your egg. You can't fry an egg by poaching it, which seems really obvious. But same thing with steaming. When you're steaming vegetables, it's going to have a pretty soft texture. So you... You might have you might still have some bite to it, so you don't want to obviously oversteam your food. But say you're steaming some broccoli, depending on how long you're steaming it for, it could still have a little bit of bite to it, or it could be very soft. So it's important to to watch your food. Another moist heat cooking method that I didn't mention and I should have is blanching. So blanching is essentially boiling, but you're boiling for a short period of time and you are pulling the ingredient out. This works really great with vegetables. It helps to um, keep a lot of the nutrients in the vegetables and a lot of the flavor in the vegetables. You're not losing a ton of it by boiling. And then once you take them, once you boil them for a couple of minutes, typically it's like two to four minutes, no longer than that. You take them and you immediately plunge them into an ice bath and that keeps them with that um, really nice bite to them. There's a little bit of texture to them. They don't get too mushy like you would if you were just like boiling them. If you listened to the episode on um, the elements of flavor and I talked about the mushy peas, yeah, like boiling peas. Ew. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't say ew. I always tell my kids not to say ew about food because one person's ew might be somebody else's favorite, but I don't like mushy peas. So that's just my own personal opinion. Some people like them. However, I'm not into the mush when it comes to vegetables. I want my vegetables to have a delicious taste and then also a delicious texture. So you can definitely get the effect you want if what you're looking for is a soft effect. So if you are trying to cook pasta, you don't want it a hard effect from cooking pasta. You want you might want some al dente, which means to the teeth, so you might want a little bit of bite to your pasta. But generally, you want it pretty soft. So you're going to use the boiling, a moist heat cooking method for that. Now, you could actually use a combination cook cooking method for um, when you are talking about cooking pasta as well. But that's kind of a, a whole other ballgame. So another example of a moist heat cooking method is the instant pot or pressure cooking. You need some sort of a moisture. You're essentially steaming or boiling under pressure. So this is also a moist heat cooking method. So again, you are not going to get that sear on anything that you're going to put in the instant pot. You can sear something in the instant pot and then cook it. So this is great for stews. You can sear the meat on the saute function or you can saute vegetables before you add the liquid. But you need liquid. It won't actually work without it. Whether you're using a manual pressure cooker or you're using um, an instant pot, which is an electric pressure cooker, you need some sort of a liquid. So that's a moist heat cooking method. Same thing. Um, slow cookers are typically a moist heat cooking method. They do use they use slow a slow cooking method of using steam to cook. So you don't necessarily need liquid in the bottom of a slow cooker, but there is liquid form that's going to create the steam. So for example, if you want to put a whole chicken in the slow cooker, you can. Typically, I rub it with oil or butter and some seasonings, and the fat from the chicken, the juices will drip, and they will create the steam, and that will help to cook the chicken. So those are also, it's, slow cooking is typically a moist heat cooking method as well. 
So the second type or the second, yeah, the second type of cooking method is dry heat. Okay, so many people think of dry heat as just being no liquid, um, which is which is true, but it's not just air. So dry heat is either using air or using oil. So sauteing or stir frying are both dry heat cooking methods as well. But here is where many people go wrong when it comes to sautéing or stir-frying. If you add liquid to it, or you cover it, or you are not leaving space in between the food that you are searing or the food that you are sautéing, it will not get a crispy texture like you might like. It will not get that sear because what you're essentially doing is steaming. If you allow enough liquid to develop in the pan, you go from sautéing or stir-frying to steaming. You change the cooking method. So the point of dry cooking, or dry cooking, dry heat cooking, is you typically want some sort of a texture on the outside of whatever you're cooking. So if you're searing a steak or a chicken breast, you, you want that Maillard reaction you want that that bit of crust on the chicken or on the steak that just adds flavor and make, gives it a delicious texture. Now, if you were to add liquid in the bottom of that pan, it would it wouldn't happen. So that's why you want to use the dry heat cooking method, and you don't want to crowd things in your pan. The same thing when you are roasting vegetables. Roasting vegetables is a dry heat cooking method. And one of the places that I see people go wrong with roasting vegetables is they crowd the pan. They put too many vegetables on the pan. They don't put enough space in between the vegetables. And then the vegetables end up mushy. So the dry heat cooking method is either utilizing oil or air to air circulating in order to cook the food. So baking roasting, sauteing, stir-frying, searing, grilling is also a dry heat cooking method, and broiling in the oven at a high heat is also a dry heat cooking method. So some of those use oil, some of them use primarily heat, but the whole point is that the air is circulating or the oil is cooking the meat. So you're using that dry heat cooking method instead of using a liquid. If you add liquid to it or you crowd the pan and it creates liquid, you are changing that cooking method and so you might not get the desired effect. So that's why it's so important to not crowd the pan and to not add liquid unless that is what you're going for. Now, if you are adding liquid to your dish or uh, to the pan, then what you are doing is you are creating a combination cooking method, which is the third cooking method I want to talk about. And so the two combination cooking methods are braising or stewing. So these are pretty similar, um, but braising or stewing, you are typically searing ahead of time and then you are adding liquid to it. And it just depends on the amount of liquid, the difference between a braise and a stew. So when you're braising something, so a roast is a good example of this. So you're going to want to sear it ahead of time to get that Maillard reaction, to get that flavor. And then you typically add some some vegetables, some liquid in the bottom, and you pop that in the oven. Slow cooking is can sometimes be a combination cooking method as well, um, but any sort of stewing as well. If you're going to brown the stew meat before adding it, which I highly recommend, it will change the flavor in a really positive way. And then adding the liquid to it. The difference is just essentially in the amount of liquid. But both of these are combination cooking methods. So you might use the dry heat cooking method first, and then you add the moisture to it, and then that's your combination cooking method. But again, what cooking method you use depends on the effect you actually want. So if, you, if the effect that you want is soft, melt in your mouth, you want to use a moist heat cooking method. If you want that little bit of crispiness or that crust, then you're, gonna, you're going to want to use a dry heat cooking method. So roasting something, sauteing something, if you want to sear on something, if you want grill marks on something, I mean, you're not going to use liquids on a grill, typically. You could braise something on the grill. You could actually sear it on the grill and then put it in a pan and then cover it. So these are options, right? But for the most part, then you're turning it into a combination cooking method. So the effect that you want on your food is going to determine the type of cooking method you use. So when you recognize the different cooking methods, the moist heat cooking methods using a liquid versus the dry heat cooking methods using hot air or oil, or the combination where you sear first and then you add the liquid, 
this is going to help you to get the outcome you want when it comes to texture especially, but also flavor. Okay, so when you are poaching something in water, there isn't going to be a ton of flavor to it. You're going to want to add the flavors either to the poaching liquid, unless you're poaching something in butter, like lobster poached in butter is a freaking dream. (laughs) It is so good. Um, Or um, you are either, you know, you're adding seasonings to it after. So you could poach something in broth. Yeah, or if you're going to add some seasonings to it after. But If you are roasting vegetables with some oil and some salt, you can totally change the flavor just by changing the oils that you use. If you're using like an avocado oil versus a sesame oil, that's totally going to change the flavors. Or, you know, the same thing with sautéing or searing, searing or sautéing in oil versus in butter. That can change the flavors as well, as well as the seasoning. So it's going to change the flavor overall based on the the texture and the actual outcome you want. So if you want to start getting the outcome you want from your dishes, first learn the elements of flavor, taste, texture, and temperature, which I talked about last week, and learn cooking methods and learn which cooking methods you utilize most often. And based on the, the outcome that you want from your food, if you want your roasted vegetables to be crispy, this is something you guys, my mom learned like a few weeks ago. I was teaching a cooking class And I was showing her the roasted vegetables and I was talking about, you know, teaching about not crowding the pan. And she was like, is that why my roasted vegetables are always mushy? And I'm like, yeah, you're putting too many vegetables on your pan. Simple as that. When you change the cooking method, you change the outcome. It might still cook, but it it might not have the texture you want. So this is going to change the game when it comes to you creating the meal that you want to create, creating the texture you want to create, and just becoming a better cook overall. Serving someone a deliciously, like a piece of salmon with like that delicious skin that is just nice and seared. And oh gosh, it is way different than serving them like a plain poached piece of salmon. Poached salmon can be delicious if it's seasoned right if you want that texture, but there's a difference in that flavor. And you can blow someone's mind just by learning cooking methods and really just up-leveling the, the, an everyday food. So last week, we talked about adding fat to a dish and how it can change the mouthfeel, and cooking methods will do the same thing. So the example that I used was something that I used to eat during bodybuilding, which was, I laugh when I'm saying it now because it was just so boring, a steamed broccoli, poached chicken with a salt-free seasoning, and rice. So adding fat to that, you add the sesame oil and you roast the vegetables instead of steaming them. And they're going to have a completely different texture, completely different flavor. And then the chicken, instead of poached chicken breast, then you can either sear it or roast it with skin on and add that crispy skin. And that totally changes the texture and you're just changing the cooking method and adding a little bit of fat. Um, The rice, you're going to use the same cooking method, but you're adding coconut milk and that just completely changes it. So Cooking method matters. It helps you to get the outcome you want when it comes to cooking. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys are learning a ton from this series and enjoying it. I don't think I mentioned any specific recipes today um, other than just some examples, but... I do always have show notes and I always have an episode guide which has the show notes. It has special charts and recipe links if I mention them. So be sure to download the the guide if you want a kind of cheat sheet to different cooking methods. That will be in the episode guide. So the link is in the show notes to download the episode guide totally free. And I will include some recipes um, for the different cooking methods in there as well. So you guys have an idea of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the different cooking methods. Hopefully I explained it well enough today. It's something I talk about a lot in cooking classes. And if you guys haven't checked out my other podcast, the Healthy Balanced Mama podcast, you can click the link in the show notes if you're interested in interviews, Q&As, and solo musings on living a healthy, balanced life. Again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I love sharing this series with you. I'm so excited to share next week's episode. So I will catch you next week. Until then, happy cooking.